Jai Guru. We start with page 354. Who wants to read? Uh, Vashistha continued, Rudra began to dance in space. I saw a shadow behind him. How could shadow exist without the sun? As I was reflecting over this phenomenon, that shadow, female, stepped in front of Rudra and she was dancing too. She was thin and huge. Her mouth emitted fire. She was Kalaratri, the night of death. Holy men call her Kal. She playfully stung the mountains into a garland for herself. The three worlds became mirrors in the three parts of her body. The entire universe was in constant motion because she was dancing. From another point of view, of course, they were firmly established in her. Even as I was looking, they appeared, disappeared, and reappeared. The revolving fireman, fireman looked like her flowing garment, but nothing really happened. By her dance, she created and dissolved the universe moment after moment. There was neither a male nor a female, nor did they dance. The Jidagasha itself is Shiva, Rudra. His own dynamic energy is non different from him and inseparable. Only the eternal, infinite consciousness existed. The Lord himself took on the appearance of Rudra, but in fact, he was formless. It was not appropriate even to assume that the infinite consciousness, which had become manifest in all its glory on account of its inherent nature, would suddenly be without it just as gold cannot be without any form whatever, whatsoever. Consciousness is never without some movement within itself. Birth, death, maya, delusion, wisdom, bondage, liberation, good and evil, you and I and all the rest of it, the deities and the natural forces are nothing but the infinite consciousness to the enlightened. He does not see diversity. I saw only that in, I saw only that space which was supreme peace, and I experienced it in the form which I have described. No one else saw it that way. That movement was experienced by me as the dance of the Lord, on account of my own psychological conditioning. The notion of motion is consciousness which has no qualities, is ignorance. Whatever, whatever there is and functions here is real to the self and not to another who does not perceive it and is unaware of it. An imaginary city is imagination, not city. Kalaratri is to the Lord what movement is to air. While she continues to dance in this fashion in space, by accidental coincidence, she comes into contact with the Lord. She is instantly weakened and made thin and transparent. She becomes of the form of the Lord himself, like the river entering the ocean. The Lord shines one without a second. The energy of consciousness dances until it beholds the glory of Nirvana. When it beholds consciousness, it becomes pure consciousness. Shortly after that, Rudra became as light as cloud and smaller than an atom. He became invincible. He had become one with the absolute Brahman, or pure consciousness. All this I saw in that rock by the divine eye of awakened intelligence. Of course, if one sees the rock with the physical eye as if it lies at a distance, only the rock is seen. In every part of the rock I saw this creation. Sustenance and dissolution take place. I saw the universe in the past, present and future. Okay. So basically it's story, story. There's not much to explain, but the knowledge part here is that 
Chida Karsha or that space of Brahman consciousness has energy inherent in it. This is important for us because in the beginning of Yoga Vishishta, we asked this question, no? How did Maya arise? How did that first I even arise? So, like everything has its inherent energy. Like that, Chidakasha has its own inherent energy which is dynamic in nature. Yeah? And that is not different from him. It is not separable from him. Yeah? But at the same time, it is not appropriate even to assume that the infinite consciousness which had become manifest in all its glory on account of the inherent nature would suddenly be without it. You cannot expect this human body to be without its energy. Right? You cannot expect air to not have movement. Then what is air? You cannot... So that you cannot separate out its nature. Are you getting this? So it's inappropriate to even assume that it can be without it. That's that point is just emphasized again and again in different ways on this page. Again, all this dance and everything is just poetry. There is no dance that you're going to experience. And not that this dance is going to come to an end at Nirvana. It just means that when you attain the highest, the supreme, there is no more movement in you. You become steady, you become firm, established in what is. And then no amount of ignorance from the external world can shake away your truth. That's it. That's all it means. That means that inherent energy that was dynamic has now gotten established. It doesn't go away anyway. That is why that paragraph is very important. Not to assume that it can be separated. It cannot be separated. It just settles down. That's all. So, in the pool of consciousness, if there is creation, and then that play and the dissolution. Dissolution phase is going to be exactly the opposite of how creation happened. Logic? Mm -hmm. Creation happened how? There is this dynamic energy, the movement, that leads to the formation of the I, 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 and then the creation comes out of it. It plays for a while, and all that same energy, the eyes, again go back into it. There's the movement that caused it, that movement also stops, becomes stable, and that is dissolution. So it's exact reverse process. Mm -hmm. That's what is explained. Now he saw all this in his meditation, you know, with a meditative eye. You are not going to be able to see it in a rock once you get your <laughs> Just FYI. <laughs> This was hunting for the rock. <laughs> Which rock is it? There's not much to explain. Any question, something you think on this page, I should explain. Anybody on my own So the, um, Anybody So the line where it says, when it beholds consciousness, it becomes pure consciousness. So the, if there is the energy that there is. The energy, from. yes. So I just explained, no? the dissolution will be the exact reverse of the creation. So the energy came out of the pool of consciousness and created everything. When all that I is ready to just get into the deluge and dissolve and disappear, it comes back into the inherent energy and the inherent energy which was dynamic, now becomes stable, established, steady. That's what that line means. I like the way it's explained because there's so many physical forms that are trying to make us understand. Yeah. Like especially the part where it says she continues to dance mm -hmm. and then when she has the accidental coincidence mm -hmm. of coming in contact with the Lord, but that is the distribution phase when the eye drops. Yes. 
I, I just like the yeah, very beautifully put. Imagery. His language and the way he's described it is beautiful. Mm -hmm. Over. Three fifty-five. Who's reading now? Okay. Vashishta continued. After thus contemplating the infinite consciousness for some time, I suddenly realized that all this creation was within myself, just as the tree is in the seed. As I was thus observing creation, I had become atomic. I realized myself as a ray of light. Soon I had become gross. In this grossness, there were the potentialities of sense experiences. When the consciousness opened its eyes, as it were, or became aware of its own inherent potentialities, the pure elements, then matra, arose, and then all the senses, which are in fact pure void, came into being. With the five elements and the five senses, their corresponding knowledge and experience arose in me irresistibly. All these were without sustainability, substantiality, and illusory. Yet, that state of my being is known by people like you as I-ness or ego sense. Though I am pure consciousness, I seem to have acquired a subtle body and an andakarana, mind, and so on. When I experienced space, I knew what earth was. I became earth. In that earth, I experienced the existence of countless universes without ever abandoning the awareness that I am the infinite consciousness. While I remained in the earth consciousness, I experienced the experiences of the earth. Truly, this was mental and I had myself become the earth. Equally truly, this was not mental, nor did I actually become the earth. Apart from the mind, there is no earth. The notion that arises in consciousness is pure consciousness and nothing else. Hence, there is no notion as such, neither a self nor a world. When it is thus seen, the world does not exist. When it is not observed carefully, it seems to come into being. It is pure consciousness alone that appears as this earth. It is the false notion entertained by countless beings in the three worlds that has attained relative or existential reality known as the earth. I am all this and all that is within all this. With this realization, I saw everything. Then I also experienced the water plane by water dharana. My contem by contemplating water, I became water. Then I became the fire element through the contemplation of that element, Tejadharana. I became the good color, Suvarna in gold and so on. I became vitality and valor in men. In jewels, I sparkled as their fire. In rain clouds, I became the light of the lightning. Whatever I experienced in the states of earth, water and fire, I experienced only as Brahman. When one enters another state with this intelligence, out of his own wish, obviously one does not experience unhappiness or sorrow. When one touches a river of sparks, which he fancies in his own mind, he does not experience pain. Such was the case with my elemental experiences. Then I became the air element by Vayudharana, contemplation of oneself as wind. I taught the grass, leaves, creepers, and straw the art of dancing. Though the nether worlds were my feet, the earth my abdomen, and the heavens my head, while I was wind, I did not abandon my subatomic nature. Okay, so now all this he's experiencing because he has attained the highest state. So right in the beginning he said, see, I suddenly realized that all this creation was within myself. So he's seeing that within himself. That he has the power to just have a dharana of something and become it. Mm -hmm. So that's how he becomes the earth, he becomes the vayu, he becomes the water, the teja. And he recognizes the beginning of creation. So remember in the beginning he had that. 
from the consciousness came the elements. From the elements, a combination of few elements became the Tanmatras. You remember mm -hmm. that part. From the Tanmatras came the just the antakaran or the subtle body that said, I want to be a physical body or had the desire. Mm -hmm. And from that, the five senses come in. Mm -hmm. The physical body is born, obviously. So the, that entire process, he saw in his meditation. So it's different reading it at the beginning of mm -hmm. Yoga Vashishta, where he's not seeing as meditation, but he is explaining the process to us. Mm -hmm. But here, he is experiencing it in meditation, which means what? Which means we can experience this in a meditation. Go back so much and recognize that this is what, how, just through a dharana, this happened to me. That the same memory can be kicked from the, our sankharas. And we can actually experience this in meditation. That you just have a thought and you become that. Just like in a dream, you have a thought, you can actually turn your dream in a particular direction. Have you noticed? Yeah. Just like that. If we have a dharana about something, we can change it to our fancy. So he says, everything has been created out of our fancy. And when we are living in these ragas and dveshas, these clouds are like in the foreground, okay? That's why you're always looking ahead, but you're not ready to take a step back away from it, if you understand what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when you take a step back from it and just see, oh, it's just a, a like or a dislike coming up now, or anger coming up. That is also because of some dislike or you know, there was jealousy coming up, hatred coming up. When you take that step back and you can see it, you realize that I am separate from this and I created this by becoming one with some something similar in the past. That's why it comes my way. Yeah. Now, obviously, some gunas, karmas have a play and because I am connected to many others, there's lots of gunas, karmas that are just coming my way. But when I am established in the self or in the isness, I see I am not this. I have created this by becoming one. So the moment that connection breaks, you attain that softness that you are, the silence that you are. And then we can go deep into that silence as long as you can keep these away. Like, you know, um, the waves in the ocean are just at the top and once you start going deep into the ocean, they don't bother you. <laughs> yeah? Like that. You can start going deep into this self and that is where you can gather this kind of experiences. So there are different levels of samadhi. Mm -hmm. So we will be doing the deeper samadhi is going ahead. But this is one of them where yoga maya comes up. You feel very egoistic that you can experience something like this, know something like this first of all as the truth and then experience it in meditation and then you get attached to it. And this also is the cause of dotting your hands with coal and again losing it. Again. So Recognize this is possible for me and from now on I know that I'm not going to get attached to it. It's just a recognition. And I'm sure you've started recognizing in life that the more you think about something or you put energy into something that starts manifesting in life. Yeah, little, little things at least. Yeah. So we have that power, that potential and it gets stabbed in meditation. That is the essence of this full page. Is this clear? Second paragraph, last line. When it is thus seen, the world does not exist. 
when it is not observed carefully, it seems to come into being. So if, mm -hmm. yeah, if you lost. are in the self, you see that you are not creating yeah. thoughts, you're not creating mm -hmm. dreams, you're not creating drama, you're silent. You're just witnessing whatever is passing by. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's not coming into being, is it? Not, at least not from the source, the source is not us. Might be coming from external sources. It will come. I hope you don't think that the world is going to stop, right? Yeah. <laughs> just, just real. So when you are very established here, you see that coming into being is at least not because of my wish or desire or aversion. That is the meaning of the world does not exist. Please don't think that the world is going to stop existing around you. In addition to that, it's all, is it also the fact that whatever is arising, it's, it's still an illusory world. So the world doesn't exist, it's the illusory part of it. It may be Correct. your karma bringing it and you're observing it, but the whole thing is... Yes, especially because it is not I. Yeah. yeah. I have just forgotten myself and I think that I am this body or this mind or this person's wife or this person's husband or whatever. So I get caught up in this external drama forgetting who I am. So I create this world that way. The moment I am established here, even though I'm, this body is still the wife, husband, child of n number of people, but I am not getting caught in the drama. I'm just witnessing it and from this witness taking whatever action is required. So externally, people will never figure out whether you are caught in the drama or not. Yes, it is an internal thing. Mm -hmm. So only for you, you have stopped creating. You get this? This is very, very clear. You have stopped creating. For the external world, it really is the same, the same mother, the same wife, everything same, goes to the same office. From inside she, is always established, not creating new drama in life. Exhausting what is basically. Do you see this? A point will come where the entire stuff gets exhausted naturally and you're done. Then there's no more coming back. But till that point, it will outwardly seem as if you are the same. And it should be, right? Mm -hmm. Outside, it should be that you are simple, ordinary. In fact, the enlightened person is the most ordinary. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. So I have a question. Oh, the previous one. Okay. okay. Sorry. Yeah. So as Vashishta is explaining this from his experience, is he like you talked about your Maya, right? Mm -hmm. So when this elaborate experiences are shared, mm -hmm. it makes people almost want to seek those yes. types of things in their meditation. So is when he's sharing it, is he just trying to explain that this is all the same consciousness, mm -hmm. that uh, whether it's air, fire, it's mm -hmm. out of my imagination. Is, is that really the point or is he also perhaps experiencing some yogmaya. <laughs> so <laughs> <sweet>. <laughs> then, to be on the safe side, let's assume he's not a yogmaya. Because <laughs> he's written the book. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, see, somebody who's in yogmaya also gets into ego. And somebody who's in ego will not be able to explain jnana with this beauty. Yeah? Even he will be in a totally different space. You've seen when you yourself get into that egoistic mode. Mm -hmm. Can you mean Jnana is that that softness there? Mm -hmm. It's lacking, it just goes away. Ego is stiff. So just from the softness and the beauty with which it is described, that should tell you, no, it is coming from a very pure space. Get it? Mm -hmm. the, the main quality of egos 
can see past yourself. Yeah. Right. How do you see it? Stiff. Yeah. Stiff in body, stiff in mind. Rigid. Rigid. Yeah. Even in speech. There is aggressive. Aggressive. That's if you fine. see this is not aggressive at all. Mm. He's ready to explain the same thing again and again and again. So much patience, Rama's not giving it. He has to make it so, so many pages. Actually, that's a really good point because when you have ego, you almost become defensive when you try to explain something. Yes. If somebody doesn't get it, your insecurity becomes like, I have to try harder to make somebody explain it and yeah. understand it. So over here, mm. yeah, I think the point's worth it. Yeah. There is a softness in the way he's explaining. Um, just like in Bhagavad Gita also, Arjuna is not getting it. And still Krishna explained it from this way, from that way, from that way. He doesn't lose patience. A true guru does not lose patience. Yeah. Because he knows where the disciple is coming in from. And the disciple has to fight such a big thing like ego. It's not easy. You know? So the guru understands this. And he comes from that space of... I am here to help you. So I don't think <laughs> such a good thing. <laughs> I just have to ask. <laughs> Moving on. Who did you? Vashishta continued. After all this, I re entered my cottage or hermitage in outer space. I looked for my physical body, it was not there. But I found an aged sage sitting in that hermitage. He was in deep meditation. I thought he must also have been an aged sage who wanted to meditate in seclusion, who had found that cottage empty and therefore occupied it after throwing out my body. <laughs> I wanted to let, it, let him have it. When my desire to stay in the cottage ceased, the cottage disappeared. When a dream or a notion comes to an end, the objects that arose in it vanish. The hermitage fell. The sage fell. I too descended along with him onto the earth plane. The sage landed in the same state and posture in which he was in that hermitage. This was because though the union of prana and apana, he had overcome the force of gravity. He did not even wake up from his meditation. His body was as strong as a rock and as light as cotton. In order to rouse him, I assumed the form of a cloud and rained and thundered. He regained body consciousness and greeted me and told me his story. I have wandered in the realms of the gods for a considerable time. I am tired of the samsara. When all this is pure consciousness, what is it that we call pleasure? Pleasure is dreadful pain. Prosperity is adversity. Sensual enjoyment is the worst disease. And pursuit of pleasure is disgusting. With the advancing of age, the hairs turn grey and the teeth decay and the faculties diminish. Only craving does not diminish. After a long time, I have attained egolessness. I am not interested in heavenly pleasures. Like you, O oh sage, I too longed to resort to a secluded place. Hence, I saw that hermitage in space. I requested him to continue to dwell in it. Both of us rose in space. He went where he thought fit, and I went my own way. I was roaming the heaven like a ghost. No one could see me till one day I thought, may I be seen henceforth by these gods. They began to see me. In due course of time, I came to have a physical or material body. To me, there was no difference between the subtle and the physical bodies. They were both pure consciousness and reality. Even here, I appear to function in and through this body because of this discourse. There is no motion in me other than of Brahman. Hence, even when I am engaged in diverse activities, this realization of Brahman does not cease. 
because of the recurrent feeling of the ethereal vashishta that arises in the minds of all of you and also in me, I appear to be seated here. In truth, however, all this is pure void and all these are only notions that arise in the mind of the Creator. When the truth is realized, all these senses of so-called, all these scenes of so-called creations vanish. Even as a mirage ceases to be seen as water when its true nature is understood. Liberation confers inner coolness, peace on the mind. Bondage promotes psychological distress. Even after realizing this, one does not strive for liberation. How foolish are the people. Beautiful story, story part. I'll skip, except that bold line in the first paragraph. When my, when my desire to stay in the cottage sees, the cottage disappeared. When a dream or a notion comes to an end, the objects that arose in it vanish. So, at the point of Nirvana, when you get established in that self, Completely. I'm not talking about getting glimpses. You get glimpses even between two thoughts sometimes. Mm -hmm. So when you get established in the self, you no more consider this as real or bothering you or you do it's you're just playing it like a game. Okay, I need to do this, take this decision, leave this job, join this, okay, whatever has come my way. There is no intention to leave this job or to find a new job. If it comes like a rolling stone because of karma, you're cornered and you're out. And here there's a new opening and automatically comes your way. You start like that. Every decision becomes a rolling stone in life. So there is no real notion. Are you getting it? You are always established in the self. So that is what he's saying in the third paragraph from the top. Third paragraph, in the middle of the paragraph. There is no notion in me other than of Brahman. Hence, even when I am engaged in diverse activities, this realization of Brahman does not cease. Because of the recurrent feeling of the ethereal Vashishta, that arises in the minds of all of you and also in me, I appear to be seated. So it's like a, a collective dream. <coughs> so we are all in each other's dream, all doing yoga vashishta together. And because you are in my dream, I am in your dream, then that is why we are seated here. Are you getting it? But once one of us say gets enlightened, mm -hmm. For that person, that the dream person. is over. But that does not mean he's going to disappear. He is going to be here, but he is no more lost in this dream. Yeah. He might also come and continue with the yoga sister classes because there's no need in him to be averse to anything, means to reject anything, or to cling on to anything. Do you get it? Everything will become very normal, very dispassionately moving on its own. I am not involved. I am just a witness of it. Choiceless. I'm choiceless. It, it has come my way. It is a part of my past karma. So I just move with the flow. Yeah. It's, it's a little tricky for you to understand right now because right now you still think I am the mother. I am this, I am that, I am a wife, I am a husband. So these are our bondages which don't let us free from the dream. The moment you are free from the dream, you realize that you are Brahman and that feeling never goes away. I explained it with an example this weekend. Like when you were pregnant, throughout the nine months, you whatever you were doing, you had a little little awareness of being careful about the baby in the womb, right? Even if you were walking, sitting, even while sleeping, you were aware that, you know, I should not turn 
this side or I should not turn onto my stomach. Something like that. That awareness was constant. Mm -hmm. Like that, awareness of the Brahman becomes constant. Do you get it? That is the state that you have established. That is kind of proof for you. When it's constantly there, you constantly know I am that and I am, this is just my karma, the body karma, the mind karma, the family, everything. But it's got nothing to do with I. It's just my bondage, the baggage that I have been carrying along. But now I'm no more a part of it. Like you go watch theatre. Have you really seen theatre? Theatre, not movie. <laughs> theatre. Yeah. Maybe on theatre, two people are fighting with each other, doing all drama to entertain you. But behind the curtains, they are friends. Yeah. They. Nothing is serious about it. Now you've not just gone behind the curtains in this in this situation. Yeah. Because even if you're behind the curtains. You will have a relation with the others. Yeah? This is fake belief that I'm enlightened. You can go behind the curtains, or you become very disinterested in people, things, get into yoga maya and feel I am enlightened. Whereas you're still interacting with those people. You still have likes and dislikes. Yeah? I'm not talking about going behind the curtains at all. I'm talking about completely leaving that theater, dropping that membership. That's what happens at Nirvana. You understand the difference? Yeah. There's no more connect. I don't mean physical connect. I, I mean from here, the attachment that it is I and mine. That's true. So basically your relations and everything is still there yes. but you are not connected correct so yes. if something happens to your closest one yes you, you will take care yeah. the same thing will happen like a mother will go pick up oh are you hurt okay you're fine good but from here mm -hmm. that clingy chewy chewing gummy icky that is gone yeah that is completely gone to others perceive you differently as a result of that because there's a I wouldn't say coldness it's very practical almost you do what is needed mm -hmm. but the people around you are used to that chewing gummy chewy mm -hmm. thing so yeah they'll see your reactions yeah relatively he will know close people will know but you know first she was very clingy and attached to this more and expressive, that. more expressive, more drama. <laughs> now she's a little less drama. So the closest people will feel a little difference. But of course, um, an onlooker who just meets you will not know the three, you're the same, maybe there's who meets you once in a blue moon, will never know. Yeah. But he, he will gauge it. Yeah, there is something. Mm. But again, are you just behind the curtains or have you left the membership of the Mandali? <laughs> membership of the Mandali told you that I wouldn't ask these questions. I was like, God, I just <laughs> with you. <laughs> <laughs> so we it's very important at this stage to be vigilant that we are not faking it or not made ourselves believe mm -hmm. it is like this but whereas it's not really yeah because so many years of jnana can give you that illusion the ego the ego yeah the ego will do anything to it anything so now is the time you become smarter and sharper and stronger than the ego mm -hmm. i have a question yeah when the the, the hermit thing right mm -hmm. in the place in the corner cottage. In the beginning, mm -hmm. uh, the dream and the dream so it's been the same thing. One of the first dreams came with somebody in the cottage and then went into different layers. Mm -hmm. So is he not going back to all those dreams and the dreams were back to the 
Well, he has moved on actually. Yeah, like yeah. from a dissolution perspective, what I'm saying is you're waiting back, so I'm waiting back to the first. Oh, okay, that way, yeah, 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 yeah. Because in the beginning, he started that's saying it. that. Yeah. A, her, a hermit and a sage in a corner, mm. that's how the dream, then went to other dreams, then went to other dreams, still the yeah. millions, and then you were here because yeah. of the war and all the things that happened. Yeah. So I'm just wondering. Yeah. Relating he's, from the beginning to that. Yeah, he's going back to the same. He's going back to the same, which was right after the I mean, right at the beginning. Yeah, okay. beginning of the story. Okay, the last sentence is important. Liberation confers inner coolness or peace on the mind. Bondage promotes psychological distress. Bondage is not um, just because of dvesha. Bondage is also because of raga. It's not just because of the bad that happens, it's also because of the good that happens in life. That is a bigger bondage. Yeah, you get Sukha in life, you get more attached to Sukha than Dukha. You're very happily ready to let go of the Dukha. Yes, but Sukha, money or family, that is the toughest to let go. And really, really look at it. They are the cause of your psychological distress. Yes. So happily nodding your head. <laughs> yeah. So recognize both that which I call good, the so-called good in my life, is equal to the same bondage that the bad brings in my life. Both really bring distress. Yeah, so homework number one for you is, do I realize that the Sukha in my life also brings the same distress that Dukkha brings? And it's all very fleeting because today's Sukha is tomorrow's Dukkha. Yes. But now we realize this and still we don't strive for liberation, he says in the last sentence. But how foolish, foolish are you? Yeah. So, ask yourself, are you foolish? <laughs> yes. One must really keep striving because this is all that the ego knows. At the last point, you will have to stop with striving also. You will have to drop striving. But initially, till the time you really understand the meaning of effortlessness, it is very important to keep striving for liberation. Everything clear on this page? You don't want me to explain the story, story. No? It's, it's continuing. <laughs> 